Hello! In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. 3, 5, and 7 are the only three consecutive odd primes. Now, first, let's remind ourselves of the definition of a prime number. An integer p greater than 1 is said to be prime if the only positive divisors of p are 1 and p. Now, a result that we are going to be using to prove this theorem is that every integer can be written in the form 3q, 3q plus 1, or 3q plus 2. For some integer q, right? This just comes from the division algorithm. When we take any integer and divide it by 3, we will get a remainder of either 0, 1, or 2. So, now let's get into proving this theorem. Now, we're trying to prove that 3, 5, and 7 are the only three consecutive odd primes. To prove that, we're going to give ourselves an arbitrary list of three consecutive odd primes. Let's say p, p plus 2, and p plus 4. The whole goal is to show that this list must be precisely 3, 5, and 7. So, to show that, we apply this result. P can be written in the form 3q, 3q plus 1, or 3q plus 2 for some integer q. We are going to show that P cannot be written in the form 3q plus 1 or 3q plus 2, and therefore P must be written in the form 3q. So, let's see what goes wrong if we assume p can be written in the form 3q plus 1 for some integer q. If this is true, well then if we add 2 on both sides, we get that p plus 2 is equal to 3q plus 3, and we can factor out a 3, and this shows that 3 is a divisor of p plus 2. So 3 is a positive divisor of p plus 2. But since p plus 2 is prime, this means by definition of a prime number that the only positive divisors of p plus 2 are 1 and p plus 2. Therefore, 3 must be equal to 1 or p plus 2. Well, 3 is not equal to 1, so 3 must be equal to p plus 2. So then if we subtract 1 to the other side, we get that p is equal to 1. So we know that p is a prime number, and therefore 1 is a prime number. But prime numbers are bigger than 1. So this is a contradiction. So our assumption that p can be written in the form 3q plus 1 leads us to a contradiction. So p can't be written in this form. So now let's see what goes wrong if p can be written in the form 3q plus 2 for some integer q. Well then in this case we're going to add 4 to both sides. And if we do that we get p plus 4 equals 3q plus 6. From here we'll factor out a 3. So we get this. And this shows that 3 is a divisor of p plus 4. So 3 is a positive divisor of p plus 4, but p plus 4 is a prime number. Which means that the only positive divisors of p plus 4 are 1 and p plus 4. Therefore, 3 must be equal to 1 or p plus 4. But we know 3 is not equal to 1, therefore it must have 3 equal to p plus 4. So then let's subtract 4 to the other side. We get p equals negative 1. So we know that p is a prime number, 
and therefore negative one is a prime number. But prime numbers are bigger than one, so we have a contradiction. So, our assumption that p can be written in the form 3q plus 2 leads us to a contradiction. So p cannot be written in the form 3q plus 2. Now we know p can be written in one of these forms, but we've just shown that p can't be written in the form 3q plus 1 or 3q plus 2. Therefore, p must be able to be written in the form 3q for some integer q. Or in other words, we see that 3 is a divisor of p. Or in other words, 3 is a positive divisor of p. Now, since p is a prime number, we know that the only positive divisors of p are 1 and p. So 3 must be equal to 1 or p. But we know 3 is not equal to 1, and therefore 3 must be equal to p. But now this tells us that our list is precisely 3, 5, and 7. And that's it. We have shown that 3, 5, and 7 are the only three consecutive odd primes. Because the way we did that was we gave ourselves an arbitrary list of three consecutive odd primes but we showed that that list is precisely the list 3, 5, and 7. So this completes the proof. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.